All right. We are returning. You're listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Michael Evans. I'm your host. Uh, In this segment, we're going to touch on Washington's insiders who have been appointed to a what's classified or called an independent NSA review panel. And I got to tell you, if this is an independent group, um, I, I, I must I must be. I must be in the running for Pope. (laughs) I mean, really. This is a group of former White House officials and security experts who have been uh, working on intelligence uh, in in many cases uh, for their entire careers, who are going to now review the national security surveillance programs. There's an official announcement that's that's forthcoming, allegedly, but ABC reports that the review panel will include... Michael Morell, Richard Clark, Cass Sunstein, and Peter Swire. Now, the guy who most concerns me here is Cass Sunstein. And the reason I say that, and I I know there's going to be those who are going to jump all over this and say, Cass Sunstein, what's wrong with him? Well, you know, uh, there's a lot wrong with Cass Sunstein. First of all, Cass Sunstein is the guy who, um, he was the regulatory czar, by the way, in, in from 2009 to, I think it was 2012, if I'm not mistaken. And he was the administrator of the Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs. And he, he was the regulatory czar, quote unquote, right? And he was, this group oversaw it was like 2,000 new regulations that were put in place. Again, these are, these are the administrative agencies that are completely out of control, extra constitutional in their design and creation, have no constitutional authority whatsoever, and have been uh, subdelegated authority by a Congress who we've never delegated that authority to in the first place, right? In other words, we never gave Congress a power of attorney to then submit power of attorney to someone else who was unaccountable to us. That's that defeats the whole point of a of power of attorney, and you know he's he's a uh, he's a, a graduate of Harvard Law School. So I mean, it's not like he doesn't know these basic rules of the rules of law. Um, these regulations that he oversaw every covered everything from fuel efficiency in your cars uh, to the redesign of the food pyramid. I mean, this is a guy who is a a uh, a nanny state believer. And when he is that kind of a guy, I got to tell you, I don't want him being in the position of overseeing what we uh, are, are subjected to by the by the NSA. And I have even more concern about it because this is the guy who actually went out and proposed that the uh, and, and advocated the government stealth infiltration of chat rooms and online social network networks and even real space groups. So how is it that a guy who advocates government snooping can review a government snooping claim? I mean, you know, isn't that putting the fox in charge of the of the guardian guardianship of the hen house? There's an article in Esquire and normally Esquire is a fairly you know, they're a fairly liberal rag, and, and they don't generally write a whole lot about politics, but this was fairly this was fairly on the mark. Um, Glenn Greenwald, and this is, yeah, the same Glenn Greenwald from er, uh, Edward Snowden. Uh, he was the reporter on the Edward Snowden event. He wrote a paper uh, back in 2010 that on a paper that Sunstein actually wrote in 2008. And here's what the uh, here's what they were th- what this thing advocated. Uh, very creepy stealth measures against conspiracy theories. Listen to this. In 2008, while at Harvard Law School, Sunstein co-wrote a truly pernicious paper proposing that the U.S. government employ teams of covert agents and pseudo-independent advocates to cognitively infiltrate online groups and websites, as well as other activist groups, which would advocate views that Sunstein deems now, and, and it's so subjective right now. It's what Sunstein deems to be false conspiracy theories about the government. This would be designed to increase citizens 
quote, faith in government officials and undermine the, consp the credibility of conspiracists. Uh, Sunstein advocates that the groups uh, that the government's stealth infiltration should be accomplished by sending covert agents into chat rooms, online social networks, and even real space groups. He proposes that the government make secret payments to so-called independent, credible voices to bolster the government's messaging on the grounds that those who don't believe government sources will be more inclined to listen to those who would appear to be independent while secretly acting on behalf of the government. This program would target those advocating false conspiracy theories, quote unquote, which they define to mean, and this is a quote, an attempt to explain an event or practice by reference to the machinations of powerful people who have also managed to conceal their role. Isn't what he just proposed a conspiracy? <laughs> I mean, it, and I cannot believe the, the, irony of this man's position. He's saying here that in order to to disarm conspiracy theorists and their and their impact on the public, we should conspiratorially create a group of secret individuals who will go in there as covert agents and pseudo independent advocates to cognitively infiltrate the conspiracy theory group to debunk their conspiracy theories. <laughs> I mean, holy smoke, did, did what I think just happened happen? And this is back in 2010, folks. So here's the point. Why is it that this is so hidden from you? Is that not also a conspiracy? The fact that our mainstream ministry of propaganda was not sharing this information with you? Is this the kind of guy we want sitting as a watchdog over the NSA spying? Are they not doing exactly a, in, 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 in a different format, but effectively the same job as he described that he wanted in this paper? You know, if you're going to tell me that you're paying government spooks to hide out and lurk in these different, you know, conspiracy theory websites and act as a disruptive force in an attempt to uh, explain or event or uh, to uh, to deflect or or limit these conspiracy theorists impact on the national discussion, that is a conspiracy in and of itself. And it's not theoretical. He's explaining to us how he's going to do it. Now, the question is, did they ever act on this? We'll never know. We'll never know. But when he proposes that the government makes secret payments, secret payment. Now, the word secret and the word conspiracy are always used in the same sentence. And a secret payment, by definition, is a conspiracy. A secret payment by government to an independent person with the intent that, and, and, the, and the foreknowledge that the reason they're hiring and paying that person is because that person has credibility where government does not, is in fact the textbook definition of a conspiracy. Define it some other way for me. Please help me here. Please tell me I'm wrong. Please show me the error of my ways. Please explain to me how a guy who advocates a position like this should be sitting on a review board of another conspiracy that we know to be a factual, a factual criminal enterprise like the NSA who are violating the Fourth Amendment rights and the First Amendment rights of every American in the nation and most peoples around the world. This defies intellectual thought. It defies intellectual honesty. And he has been named to this board. By the way, for the record, and another little tidbit you didn't know, he's married to Samantha Powers. 
Now, Samantha Powers is the one who was just named as the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. And her uh, her appointment was uh, pretty deeply divided the Senate in, in, her, uh, in the hearings that they held to approve her. And... You know, she is, and and he, both the, of these people, are just completely off the charts in terms of their, they're not mainstream in their thinking at all. And he is a, he, you know, I mean, this guy is so far away from the reality of what Americans believe should be appropriate that when a guy like this comes up with a, with a, a spine-chilling concept, that declares that we can fight conspiracy theorists by a conspiracy itself to undermine them using government secretive payments and, and plotting and scheming and skullduggery. I'll tell you. And, and for the record, this guy is a very, very close confidant of Obama. He has been in the Obama administration since day one. He has played an extraordinarily important role in the shaping of the policy and the concepts and the thinking and the utter destruction that's been wreaked upon our country for the past five years. And, he, you know, they've they've tossed his name around as a guy to go on the Supreme Court. My goodness, this guy could get approved to the Supreme Court? He has been responsible for overseeing policy relating to privacy. So, since the NSA is doing this under the administration's eye and watchfulness, I got to ask you then, how is it that you're putting a guy who was part of the implementation process of the NSA spying as on a board to be an oversight, an independent reviewer of that same. I mean, does any of this make sense to you folks? I mean, I, I got a question the 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 legitimacy of this organization and this grouping. The people who have been named to this board are, for the most part, uh, all on the wrong side of this issue. And so what we can expect is a complete, total, and utter whitewash of what's been gone what what's gone on. Now, the, there's another guy, Michael Morell. And he um is drawing the ire of the NSA opponents on this issue and privacy uh uh supporters because he worked for the CIA since nineteen eighty. He was President Bush's intelligence briefer on September 11, 2001, and he retired from his position as a deputy director of the CIA this past year, I think, in 2012. So the, the question is, if the guys that you're hiring to oversee and review this group are psychophants and the plotters of the actual conspiracy we're talking about, doesn't that doom the review board to utter failure? In other words, they're going to come back and, well, uh, Amy Stepanovich, she's the director for the Electronic Privacy Information Center. It, it, their handle is EPIC, uh, their domestic surveillance project uh, director. She told the Washington Post that the appointments are not encouraging for privacy advocates. <laughs> Boy, that's an obvious statement, isn't it? Here's what she said, and she's right. Quote, an independent evaluation of the NSA's surveillance programs is needed, but a worthwhile review requires an independent team of evaluators. We continue to learn how each of the oversight mechanisms that the administration has pointed to have continuously failed. The background of this panel indicates that it, too, is unlikely to be meaningful or effective. Um, all four of these guys are, are kingpins in the government. All four of them are pawns, and, 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 but power pawns in, in this administration. And uh, the only guy who out there who has any level of credibility, who also has some 
questionable past is the guy named Swire. According to this article, uh, Swire's presence on the oversight board um, is is an encouragement f- for optimism. I'm not quite sure I agree with that, but l- let's ex- investigate why. Currently, he is a professor at the Georgia Institute of Technology. Now, if we go by past history, right, there is some level of, of um, hope in this particular guy. Swire criticized uh, what he perceives as surveillance abuse back in the Bush administration. And he has recently signed two amicus briefs to the Supreme Court, challenging the NSA's programs disclosed by Edward Snowden in June. One of the briefs signed by Swire said the NSA's order to Verizon to hand over millions of phone call logs and data, quote, clearly violates the law and presents an extraordinary risk to personal privacy of millions of U.S. persons. Such sweeping collection of data about individuals who, quote, have done nothing to warrant government suspicion has the potential to be a 21st century equivalent of general searches, quote, double quote, end quote. So that was his official statement. During an interview last month with Information Security Media Group, Swire argued that the time has come for less secrecy around government programs and called for restraint given the nation's current technological capabilities. This is the quote from that article. The problem with great databases is, once they exist, people find a way to use them. I also think the collection about Americans doing domestic calls is highly questionable under the Fourth Amendment. So the review panel is going to meet in 60 days, and they're going to provide an interim report to the director of national intelligence, James Clapper, (laughs) who will then brief the president on the group's determinations. I mean, if you don't smell a setup coming 40 miles away, right? ABC notes that the aforementioned list may be incomplete. An official White House announcement is forthcoming and expected soon. So let's understand where we're at here. Um. The review panel is going to meet in 60 days. They're going to then compile a response and their opinions on this surveillance issue. And they're going to provide an interim report to James Clapper, the director of the NSA itself and national intelligence, who just lied to Congress repeatedly regarding this entire nefarious affair and has a vested interest in covering up because he's the captain of the ship. Right. And he doesn't want to admit that the ship transgressed into uh, waters that it's it's prohibited from. So they're going to do a report. Clapper's going to get it. He's going to tear it apart and have an opportunity to review it and perhaps, you know, uh, shoot down segments of it or whatever the case may be. And then he's going to then brief the president, who also has approved of the program <laughs> on this group's determinations. <clears throat> And there's only one guy out of the four who who even remotely may be on the side of the Constitution. <laughs> I got to tell you, it's not surprising. And I'm laughing because if I don't laugh, I, I will have to cry. I'll have to cry because where we are right now, is so far outside the boundaries of any authority that these people truly actually ever had that we can we can really honestly know that this is not going to come out in favor of any beneficial or substantial change to the American people. In fact, what they're going to do is provide cover for even deeper uh, violations. You watch and see. That's what will happen. <clears throat> They're going to provide cover for even deeper uh, penetration into the American the American uh, communication system. One, by whitewashing what they've already done. And then two, by offering suggestions and, and, and improvements that will be improvements for them and their positioning and detriments to you. Cass Sunstein shouldn't be within 100 miles of this project. Really. Uh, You know, the 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 uh, other player, uh, Michael Morell, uh, absolutely not. Swire, maybe. 
And and but I gotta I gotta even question a guy who's been a lifetimer in the CIA because. They operate exclusively on the conspiracy concept. And so I'm not sure he has the objectivity, despite his recent, uh, you know, arguments to the contrary of my point. And I'm, I'm trying to be fair here. You know, I, maybe the guy has seen so much in his career and, and he recognizes how far down the rabbit hole we fall fallen that he's willing to stand up and say, you know, with all the inside knowledge I've got, I've got to I've got to use my position here to try to rein this in a little bit. Maybe that's the case. I mean, this is somebody else's uh, article here, right? And so uh, critical thinkers that we are, we never accept anyone else's opinion as our own. We always do our own homework. We always make sure that we do our own investigation. And we always look for the uh, hidden meaning in everything that's out there. Because propaganda doesn't have to be as blatant as you might initially imagine. It can be far more subtle than that. And, you know... It's subtle in the way Cass Sunstein says we should create the secret group of secretly paid by a secret government organization uh, to go out there and and go on and go and and be a disruptive force against conspiracy theory websites and blogs. Hey, um, that's subtle from the government's perspective. And yet that subtle activity deeply affects the ability of America to to have a free and open discussion about where what we want as a nation, right? In other words, is this all about them or is it all about us? And I don't mean us meaning just the non-government people. I mean, is this all about just them and what they want? Or does the national dialogue take into account our views at all? Is Are we allowed to have an input in this? I mean... I get it. We're the we're the sheep being fleeced. We're the cow being milked, right? We're be, we're the stone being squeezed. I understand that. And and this confirms the fact that you really don't have any input in your own destiny, and in our destiny as a nation. Because when this is the independent organization, and that's their words, not mine, right? They're calling this an independent review panel. Now, if these people are independent, you know, Hitler was some kind of a Cub Scout. Really? This is just, you know, this is completely absurd. And when you appoint insiders like this to handle this stuff, um, I I just don't see any hope for the country. I really don't. And I don't mean that to say, you know... We, this is it's completely we, we've gone too far down the road to be recovered that I do believe politically. And you've all heard me say that many times. I believe we're beyond salvage in a political arena, in a political sense. I don't think we can go in and at this point make enough changes from the inside to affect the outcome that is will occur long before those changes can take an effectual uh, measure and re-steer the boat. Right. In other words. We're so close to the iceberg at this point that no matter how hard we spin that 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 ship's captain's wheel, we can no longer avoid the iceberg. That's where I'm at. That's my position. It's my opinion. You're entitled to your own. And I strongly encourage you to formulate your own. You know, don't follow my lead and my mantra because that's my opinion based on what I think. But my, you know, my uh, view is is only mine. It should never be parroted as yours. I can draw you analogous pictures to explain what I think. I can give you information. But that information is always subject to review by you before you formulate a decision and, and, and come up with your own concept. If you're not doing that, then you're playing into their hands. You're drinking my Kool-Aid. Now, I'm not saying that you know, I'm wrong. I think I'm right, or I wouldn't be out here espousing the views I, I I espouse. But it's up to each of us to not only have a view, but to cognitively understand how we arrived at that. And that's what I seek for you. I seek for you to be so intellectually honest that you're looking at both sides of the of the position, or three, or five, or ten sides of the position. And then having enough information at your disposal 
you are now prepared and willing to make an informed decision that you have arrived upon on your own, utilizing your own intellectual capacity. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to touch on our third topic, which is the new Obamacare army. If this doesn't scare the pants off you, nothing will. Uh, they're hiring a whole group of criminal prosecutors and investigators to go after Obamacare people who refuse to play ball. Find us on the web at americasvoicenow.org, facebook.com forward slash americasvoicenow, and youtube.com forward slash americasvoicenow. We'll be back in just a moment, and we will make sure that we 